Are you bored of being a world conqueror on Earth and need more areas to spread your tyranny? Then you need Solaris. This is one of the first sci-fi strategy games that has been very successful. As time has gone on, it's been gaining a significant player base over time, with no sign of it declining for now. If you want to try out a new strategy game, then this might be the game for you. It takes a different approach to other Paradox games, and it pushes towards fantasy, which has enabled it to attract a new audience in comparison to Paradox's other strategy games. People who are interested in space exploration and UFO lovers I'm sure would be far more interested in this game than other games like EU4. Maybe there were a few Stellaris lovers at the Area 56 meetup a few years ago. Probably should play Stellaris instead of annoying the US government. Getting back on track though, in this video we discuss what makes Stellaris so fun and why it's been so successful despite being a bit different to other Paradox games. And finally I want to discuss what the future holds for Stellaris. Could there be a sequel to Stellaris? And will it be announced just after Victoria 3? What would be amazing however is if we could shoot for the moon and get to 75 subscribers by the end of the year. We do lots of this sort of content so why not subscribe? So I firstly want to briefly talk about how to play Solaris to give some people a bit of context to this game. But if you already know how to play this game feel free to skip this part with the timestamps below. Stellaris is a strategy game set in an alternative reality of space in the future. You can play as several species and you need to explore space at the beginning of your campaign. Your end goal is to advance your empire through any means possible and the ultimate goal could be said to conquer everything in the whole galaxy. There are loads of interesting things that happen in game where you can interact with diverse alien races discover strange new worlds with unexpected events, and collect resources building your galactic empire up. So what makes Solaris so fun and popular? And we begin with talking about accessibility. A lot of Paradox games struggle to be accessible to a broad audience, since they can be seen as complicated strategy games in comparison to other ones in the market. While these sort of strategy games are great for retaining an audience, due to the replayability of them, it may dissuade less fanatical people from purchasing the game because it's very complicated. Solaris clearly follows the trend of other Paradox games and is to a certain extent complicated, but I'd argue it's one of the easiest Paradox games to grasp. The game has loads of hints and probably has one of the best Paradox tutorials to start your first campaign with. I don't think I've ever played the E4 tutorial. Is there actually a tutorial? It's therefore clear that Solaris is a lot more simple than games like Victoria 2, but I'd argue it makes up for it with the mechanics and unique features of the game. People really enjoy the exploration and discovery part of Solaris at the beginning of the game. It's probably because you never know what the universe beholds as you venture out of your home planet. Try not to bump into any killer dolphins. This therefore makes it replayable despite the simplicity. Another reason that Solaris is accessible is because it's fairly forgiving for new players, and people with limited knowledge on the game can still do well. This is unlike other Paradox games, and you always have a chance to adapt to the ever-changing political structure of the cosmos. Accessibility is therefore a key reason for the game's success, and it makes it a fun game for new players, rather than being incredibly frustrating and painful, which is what loads of people experience including myself when they first play Victoria 2. Another thing I want to talk about is that the game has significantly improved over time and it's almost unrecognisable from launch. If there's one thing I've learned from making these videos is that you should always wait a few days before you buy a game at release and let other people let you know if the game is good. Clearly you can trust IGN with their Solaris review, just look at those dislikes. At the release in 2016, Solaris managed to pull off a relatively successful launch with most people giving the game a positive review, and therefore Solaris became one of the top sellers on Steam for 2016. However, a lot of people at launch still had their hesitations and believed it lacked depth and was a bit soulless to begin with. The developers therefore strived to make the game a lot more enjoyable for people who wanted more content, and over time set out to make DLCs and updates, giving a lot more flavour to the game. With all the updates and expansions over time, the game has been given a lot more content and major updates have completely changed the game, making it more enjoyable for everyone. 
Some notable examples of this were the reworking of First Contan with other alien galactic empires in Nemesis, or megastructures in Utopia. With the addition of new species over time, I'm sure a lot of the critical people have now calmed down, clearly showing just how good the game has become. In fact, Solaris has nearly beaten its all-time peak two times, with 64,000 active players in March 2020 and 57,000 active players earlier this year in April 2021. This clearly means it's retained its player base over the years. Although the continued improving of the game is a trend you see with most Paradox games, and therefore it doesn't particularly make Solaris unique, sometimes some Paradox games are not able to retain a player base like Imperator Rome. Therefore, Ultimately, the significant updates over time have continued to make Stellaris fun, and on the whole are quite popular with the Paradox fanbase. One of the final points I wish to discuss is mods. Paradox games are known for their mods, and it's one of the main reasons for its success as a game company. I personally have played Crusader Kings 2 Game of Thrones more than the actual game. Stellaris is no exception to the trend, and there's many unique mods that have been added into the game. The most popular mod of Solaris is the Star Trek mod New Horizons, which has tried to deliver you with a Star Trek game experience. I personally don't know much about Star Trek, except the guy with the pointy ears, but even I'm intrigued to find out what exactly this mod has to offer. We also have the Star Wars mod, making the game, in my opinion, even more fascinating to buy. The community has also added some other things that can make your gameplay a lot more visually pleasing like the Beautiful Universe mod. This allows you to feel more immersed in space. Ultimately overall, these are just a few examples of what wacky and wonderful mods that have been added into Stellaris, and they are uniquely different to other mods of Paradox games. It's therefore no wonder Stellaris is such a popular game. I'd argue that perhaps Stellaris is a step in the right direction for Paradox, since they've gone from making history games to now making a strategy fantasy game. And we've seen the creators of Total War almost entirely focus on fantasy games, and they've gone full throttle on their Warhammer series, even making a third Warhammer Total War. I personally prefer the history games, which I'm sure most of you would have guessed if you've been on this channel for a while, that clearly there is demand for fantasy games in the strategy market. Perhaps this trend will continue, and the Solaris franchise is only going to get more popular, but what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.